way the figures won't make any money giving away a free meal like that, do you? Well, he's not getting rich on you, brother, that's for sure. <laughs> Joseph, the inner man must be taken care of. Absolutely. If that inner man ever got out, he's big enough to take on the both of us. <laughs> All we got left to do is pick up that sugar and grain. Come on. Right. Horse Cartwright. Your time has come. There is no escaping. It is time, Horse Cartwright. How does she know who I am? I don't know. Let's go find out. Joe. It is time to have your palm read, Horse Cartwright. How did you know my name, anyhow? Madame Adela knows all. Well, go ahead. Why don't you let her read your palm? You got nothing to lose. Oh, but Joe, this whole thing's a bunch of Tom foolishness. Such talk is foolishness. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with her. Don't talk foolish. After all, I, I think you probably have a fascinating palm. Of course, with the size of this hand, it may take two or three sessions, ma'am, but I'm sure you can figure it out. we got things to do now. Come on. Then you will die. I'm gonna miss you, Hoss. You mock my powers. It is easy for you. It is your brother who is in danger. Yeah. That stuff sure is silly, isn't it? Yeah, silly. It's amazing that people still believe in that sort of thing. Yeah, amazing. And you know that it's sad that people will actually spend money on that kind of foolishness. Yeah, it's sad. What does it say? I see a tall man. He is handsome. His hair is gray. He seems disturbed about something. Yeah, that'd be our Paul. He's disturbed because we ain't home them supplies yet. Come on, Joe. Yes, yes, that would be the reason. Yeah, well, let's go. Wait! Wait. I see a woman. Oh, yeah? Go on, go on. Is she pretty? No. No, she is not pretty. She is beautiful. Oliver, go on, go on. Ah, oh, yes, yes, I see her clearly now. She is tall, statuesque. Her hair is golden like the sun. Her eyes are sparkling like the stars. The moment you meet, she will fall in love with you. Yeah? <laughs> what I see is true. All that I say shall happen. You mean I'm really going to meet this gal? With hair as golden as the sun. With sparkling eyes. <sighs> it could happen now, Dad Murray. Come on. Well, I wouldn't stake your life on it. <gasps> What's, what's the matter? It what is nothing. Never mind. The reading is over. But wait a minute. You just... The started... reading is over. One dollar a quarter, please. A dollar a quarter? You said just a dollar. I... With your hand, you need a rabbit's foot. Yeah, I know. Please go. Thank yeah. you. Come on, Joe. See, Austin, then there's this phrenology word. I study the bumps on your head. Yeah. Now, figure you let me whap you one good with an axe hail on top of the head, and you'll have a fortune will make you sit up and take notice. No, I don't want to stuck now. That stuff you know better than that. Get it. Go. Up. 
So watch where you're going, you clump. You're as gold as the sun. Yeah, honey. Big sparkly eyes. I'm so sorry I didn't see you. Here, let me help you. No, ma'am, that's... It's all right. I didn't hurt you, did I? No, I'm, I'm fine. I'm Kathleen. Kathleen Walker. I'm happy to meet you, Miss Walker. I'm Hoss Cartwright. I'm happy to meet you, Mr. Cartwright. Yeah, you can just call me Hoss. <laughs> you can just call me Kathleen. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, that's my little brother, little Joe Cartwright. Kathleen? Ka Kathleen? You aren't married, are you, Hoss? No, ma'am, not a bit. Are you courting? Uh huh. Not so as you've noticed it, no, ma'am. Why? Because I want you to court me. <laughs> you want me to court you? Would you, Hoss? Would you? Here. Oh, Papa, I want you to meet Hoss. Don't worry, Kathleen. I'll handle this. Oh, well, Papa, he wasn't. Oh, no, listen, no standing up for him. I know he's tight. Are you getting a wagon? Uh, I'll handle this, Romeo. Romeo? I ain't no ladies' man. Papa, I saw what you were trying to do. I got eyes. Now get in the wagon, like I said. Now, no man makes a proper advances to my daughter without answering to me, hey, John sir. Walker. Oh, now, you, him him you stay proper. out of this. You ain't gonna talk yourself out of this one. I'm gonna give you the beating of your life. Oh, come on now. I ain't gonna fight a guy your size. Don't you worry about my size. I whip men twice your size. Well, nevertheless, I... Uh, 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 uh. Now, oh. get up and fight. Uh, I knew I had you figured out right. No backbone. Now, I'll let that be a lesson to you. And you stay away from my Kathleen. Yes, sir. I sure will. And get up, my brain. Uh, 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 uh. Sure does hit hard for a little man, don't he? Yeah. He hits hard for a little mule, I mean. Uh, oh, hey, Joe. Did you see the way that guy looked at me? Yeah. yeah I saw it, but I don't believe him. It's just like that made him, if Della said it would. You know, maybe she's got something after all. Well, maybe she was right about Kathleen, but she sure forgot to mention the father. Oh, Ooh, that's gonna be so. You better get some beefsteak on that. Yeah, as soon as we get home. Hey, here comes Seth. I'll get that order filled. Hey, Seth! Huh? Can you get this order filled for me real quick? We gotta get on our way. Oh, sure can, little Joe. Five sacks of grain and two sacks of sugar? Right. Well, I'm out of grain. I haven't got any sugar either. What, you, you sold out of both of them? That's right, sold out. That new man, John Walker, came in with his daughter and bought out all my grain and sugar. That's just great. Now, what are we going to tell Paul? What are we going to tell Paul? We'll tell him they're sold out of it, that's all. I got a load of supplies coming in the morning. Thanks, Seth. You know, Joe, this is all your fault. We should have come here straight away, just like I wanted to in the first place. What do you mean it's my fault? I'm not the one who had my fortune told by that, that Madame Adela. Not to mention that mess you got into with Kathleen and her father. You saw Madame Adela Hoss? Ain't she a marvel? She predicted I'd sell out of grain and sugar. Oh, come on. Don't tell me you believe in that stuff, too. Well, you ain't walking out of here with any sugar, are you? She's truly a marvel. Don't you think so, Hoss? Yeah, yeah. She's, she's a marvel, Seth. Come on, Joe. Let's go home. Oh. Just about to come into town looking for you. What took you so long? Oh, wait, were we gone long, Pa? Were we gone long? Can't you fellas ever go into town, go right into town, and come right back? Where are the supply, Mr. Hoss? Oh, up saying we didn't get them. You see, Paul, Seth was all out. Yeah, no, no, no grain, no sugar. Yeah. You're all out, and you came back empty, right? Yeah, well, there's going to be some tomorrow, though. He said he'd have a shipment in there tomorrow. Well, pick it up first thing in the morning. Right. All right, first thing in the morning, you go into town and pick up those supplies. Yes, sir. sir. No sugar. No pie, no dessert, no nothing. 
been like that all day. Why can't you? What happened to your eye? Well, it's funny you should ask, Paul. Uh, wait a minute. Don't tell me. I have a feeling I shouldn't know. Your coffee, little Joe. Ah, thank you, Hopsey. I'm gonna stay up and read for a while. Pa's going to bed. I'm <coughs> saying, <coughs> what's the matter with that coffee? No sugar. Yeah, well, no, <coughs> no sugar is one thing, but what you put in it? Chinese sweet, vinegar root. You know, like you bring Hopsey sugar. You wear a sake, we do guide hall. And you take your feet off the table. I wonder if he knows what he's saying. Oh, Madame Adele. I must talk to your brother at once. It is a matter of life and death. Life or death? Yes, life or death. Life or death. Well, I'll get him. Why don't you make yourself at home? Thank you. Hey, horse! Yeah. You got a visitor. Who is it? It's a lady you met in town today. She alone? She sure is. I'll be right down. talk to you at once. It is urgent. What about? In all my years of fortune telling, I have always told the truth. You mean what you told me ain't the truth? Of course I told you the truth. I just did not tell you all. Yeah, we know you left out Kathleen's father. Yeah. I am telling you, Craig Bonner is the man to fear. You have heard of Craig Bonner. Craig Bonner? Craig, oh, Craig Bonner! Craig, Craig Bonner, the, the gunfighter. Everybody's heard of him. Today, when I read your palm, I saw danger in this man. At first, I did not want to tell you all that I saw. At last, I feel better. Now that the whole truth is out, a thorn is lifted from my heart. Uh, madam, wait a minute. What, uh, what's this Craig Bonner got to do with me? <laughs> <sighs> Craig Bonner rides to Virginia City for one reason. 
to kill Hoskatrite. <laughs> that this Madame Adela makes money by scaring people like you. Look, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. She's gonna show up in a couple of days. She's gonna tell you she'll protect you from this Craig Bonner as long as you cross her palm with a little silver. Yeah, maybe so, Joe, but that bird, she's been right about everything else. Now, we ought to try reading her palm sometime. I'll tell you right now, it's gonna say right across it, E Pluribus Unum. You thought to the right. Nobody can tell future by looking at the palm. You're absolutely right, I'm saying. That is all hoglash. Then I had to hogwash. That's why I say it, hog lash. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what I've been trying to tell. Now, this is only way to tell future. Oh, come on, Hop Sing. Come on, Joe. We got things. Well, sticks show what happened in future. Oh, come on, Hop Sing. I mean, you're, you're being just as bad as this Madame Adela. You're wrong. She, Madame Adela, come lately. Chinese been telling future since long before Great War in China. Now, you drop sticks, Mr. Horse. Come. Where they fall is how everything going to be for you. Well, if it doesn't work out, we can always play tiddlywinks. All right, Hopsy, I'm going to do it, but not because I believe it. Just trying to understand and be nice, that's all. I'll do it. <laughs> so, uh, now, what do they say? I know sticks will tell. Yeah, but what do they tell? They say somebody coming to Virginia City to kill you. And don't try it again. Madela, I foretell the future. Your life is in great danger, Craig Bonner. I know, I know. Get that black cat out of here, lady. You know nothing. There is more to be told. Come to my tent at three o'clock. Three o'clock. Your life depends on it. Double checking what? Oh, for strangers. Oh, Hoss, come on. Are you still are you still worrying about that gunfighter business? Joe, I ain't worried about no gunfighter or nobody else. It's just to we'll make sure that's all. Well, look, this is nonsense. Now, nobody can predict the future, right? Am I right? Right. All right, then let's go in and get the supplies before something happens. Yeah. What do you mean before something happens? <laughs> Oh, good morning, boys. <clears throat> good morning, Seth. <laughs> morning, Seth. We uh, come in to pick up them supplies. Well, let's see. That was five sacks of grain and two sacks of sugar, right? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, and, and Pa wants some pipe tobacco, too. Well, I'll have it for you as soon as the supply wagon gets here. You mean it ain't here yet? Oh, it's a little late. Be an hour or two. 
I'm sorry, but these things happen. Uh, well, what do we do now? Well, with that burner, we can't go back home without it. So might as well just wait around here, huh? Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we go down and pick up the mail and then go over to the saloon and have a beer? All right. Just one beer, though. I don't want nothing else to go wrong. What could go wrong? Two fellas having a beer. <laughs> Hardly anybody ever gets killed in the saloon. Hey, Dean, got any mail for us? You see the stranger? Uh, Joe, <laughs> that's see you in town today, too, ma'am. I'm sorry about your eye. Oh, that's all right, ma'am. It ain't too sorry anymore. Well, thank you, Dean. Sometimes Papa treats me like I was a little girl. You don't think of me as a little girl, do you, Hoss? Uh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. Not at all. Don't you think I'm old enough for courting? Yes, ma'am. Will you court me, Hoss? <laughs> if you really want me to. <laughs> oh, Hoss, oh. oh, I want you to. More than anything, I want you to. But what about your Paul? You know, I got a funny feeling he won't like me much. Oh, he will once he gets to know you, Hoss. It's just that since Mama died, it's just been me and Papa. I'm all he has. He, he just doesn't want anything to happen to me. Yeah, well, the way he looks after you, ma'am, there ain't much likelihood of anything happening to you. <laughs> Where uh, is your Paul now? Well, he's over at the bank taking care of some business. You do like me just a little bit, don't you, Hoss? Well, I, I like you a bunch. <laughs> Will you come by the house tonight? Well, yes, ma'am. I'd love to. But uh, what about your Paul? Oh, well, I'll take care of it. I'll talk to Papa. Is 8.30 too late? No, ma'am. 8.30 is just fine. Oh, dear. There's Papa. Hospital. Will you look your very best tonight? I want you to make a good impression on Papa. Yes, yes. Bye. Yes. Hotel stoop. Yeah, who's he? That's Greg Bonner. He's reputed to be the greatest gunfighter in this whole territory. Oh, yeah. Water, Hoss, you're looking a little pale. Oh, Lordy. How doing, brother? Joey's here. Hmm? He's here. Supply wagon? Good. No, no, him. Him? Who's him? Greg Bonner, that's who. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. I just seen him with my own eyes. Well, what's he look like? Well, he looks like something I don't want to get messed up with, that's for sure. That burn everything that Madame Adela said's come true. Oh, now, Hoss, come on. Will you relax? He's probably just passing through. Joe, she ain't been wrong about nothing. Well, what are you gonna do? Well, I, I want to stay away from him, that's for sure. 
Hey, Roy. Roy, come here a minute. Excuse me. What's up? What's that fella doing in town, anyhow? Well, he's looking for someone in town, but he won't say who. What's the matter, Hoss? You coming down with a grip or something? No, I'm, I'm just fine, Roy, just fine. Hey, listen, Roy, what do, you, what do you know about him? Well, just that he's supposed to be about the fastest gun around. Yeah, well, he must be wanted somewhere for something. Yeah. Nothing that I know of. I've heard tell he's killed about 12 men. Thirteen, to be exact, but there was all fair fights. Well, boys, I'll see you later. Thirteen? Thirteen. That's an unlucky number. Yeah. If I was him, I'd kill another guy just to get off that number. Yeah. I'd know that perfume anywhere. Uh, what are you doing here? What am I? It's me, Craig Bunner. What's all this old hello business? Well, I just didn't expect to see you, that's all. <laughs> Surprised, huh? Oh, am I? <laughs> How's about giving your fiance a big kiss? Well, not, not here, Craig. Why not? You're my girl, aren't you? You ain't been fooling around with any other guys, have you? No, of course not. Well, what do you think I am? A woman. Now, I come nearly 400 miles to find you, and I ain't in no mood to play games. Well, I'm not playing games, Greg. Not with you, honey. Well, see, I came to town because I, I had this appointment at the, at the dressmaker, and I, I'm, I'm having this dress made. It's red, your favorite color. That's good. Red's my favorite color. Now, you wear it tonight because I'm coming calling. I've got something mighty important I want to talk over with you. Uh, well, uh, see, I'm late for the dressmaker now, Craig, and... And you know how they are about appointments, so I'll see you goodbye. Wait! Where do you live? Women. Hey, hey, come on, will you stop being so nervous? You're gonna break out in a rash. Brian, just walk naturally. He doesn't know who you are. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, clumsy, ain't he? Madame Adela. Reckon what he's gonna do in there. You know, maybe he's gonna get his palm red. Yeah, his gun hand. 
I wonder what it says. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> You are standing on the street, Main Street. You are facing a man, a big, strong man. You are wearing a gun. He is wearing a gun. You are faster than he is. But you do not win the fight. I see you lying very still in the street. You are bleeding. And your eyes are closed. Am I dead? This I cannot foretell. Only that you are bleeding. I can't stand the sight of blood. It makes me sick. There is only one way to escape your fate. How's that? You must leave Virginia City. Go far, far away. You must leave at once. Today. You mean run? Yes, for your life. Craig Bonner, don't run from man nor beast. How much time have I got? Time is running out. The man you will meet is Hoss Catwright. He is a very dangerous man. You must run quickly. If you meet him... If I meet him, I'll kill him. Uh, what happened? I just shot myself in the foot. I'm serious. You're delirious is more like it, isn't it? Papa, this is different. It's different about it, don't it? Well, this is it's true love. It's, it's a pure love. And I'm reborn. Just one more time, Catherine, please. Just once more. Well, oh, there's nothing new about moonshining. This is not moonshining. Why, this ingenious machine. It's going to create an elixir of the ages. It's going to be Dr. John Walker's. Infinite bromide. Just think what that will mean to mankind. Just think what it will mean to me. It's the dream of my life. No more two-bit schemes. And Aunt Adela, she can give a fortune telling. And you and she and I will travel. We'll be rich. And what's that got to do with Hoss Cartwright? Why, everything. Hoss has got money. And you as Hoss's fiance. You'll have access to that money. We can't do anything about this dream without Hoss's money. You, you wouldn't turn your back on your poor father, would you? Papa, I just want to live my own life. What? Married to some broken down two-bit gunfighter who find himself shot in the belly in some back alley someday? I love Craig. It seems to me you told me that you'd never marry a man who totes a gun. Papa, what am I going to do? I'm so mixed up. I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm almost finished with our elixir. And when it turns to that golden hue, your Aunt Adele and I, we're going to go on the road and we'll make a fortune. And what about me? You'll be free as a bird. You can marry anybody you want. Please, Kathleen, please. Just one more time. This is really the last time. I promise you. No more schemes. As soon as I finish this one. Agreed? Agreed. Thank you very much, Mrs. Kane. Good day. Hey, sir. The supplies come in yet? No, sir. Yeah, about 20 minutes ago. Ah, oh, good. You just kill it for that green sugar as we'll pick it up. Right. Well, hey, don't forget Farm's pipe tobacco. Yeah, and the pipe tobacco. Well, the tobacco I can let you have, but I'm out of grain and sugar again. What? That's right, Hans. How can that be? You said the wagon just came in 20 minutes ago. Well, that's true, little Joe, but uh, John Walker came and bought all my grain and sugar. Just getting started, I guess he's kind of short of supplies himself. 
Well, doggone it, Seth. You knew we were coming back here. Why don't you save yeah. some of it for us? Business is business. And in my business, first come, first serve. Well, thanks a lot. Well, now what do we do? Well, that burn it. We go back home without it, that's all. Paul sure is going to be sore, though. I can say that again. Wait, don't forget your pa's tobacco. Thanks a lot, Seth. Hey, you are. Yeah, thanks. I'd hate to go home empty-handed. Tell your pa there'll be a load of fresh supplies in the morning. And don't be late. Business has sure been good. Fine. Better fix up the bond, too. Seth was all sold out. Yep. Sold all out. All sold out. No right. sugar, no grain. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the supply wagon didn't come in. Is that is that correct? No. No, it did. It came in. <laughs> oh, the supply wagon came in. And what happened? Well, Paul, it, it got there about an hour late, see, and old Seth said we might as well hang around and wait, so we went up to the saloon and waited. And had yourselves a couple of beers. No, 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 just, just one. I mean, he, he had one, and then I had one. I see, one beer each. Then what happened? Well, Dad, Bernie Paul, when we got back over there at the store, the, the wagon had come and gone, and Seth has already sold out again. I see, he's just sold out again. No grain? No grain. No sugar? No sugar. Didn't bring anything back, is that correct? I don't know. We, uh, we, uh... Oh, you did bring something back. What's that? Uh, uh, you pipe tobacco. Oh, my pipe tobacco. A whole lot of it. Well, isn't that nice of you? I have some advice for you. Give that pipe tobacco to Hop Singh. It might help allay his feelings. He's been waiting for those supplies for two days. It wasn't the best I thought it was going to be. You always chew that. <laughs> well, I got the flowers, Hoss. Don't ask me where I got them. Where'd you get them? Well, you know that planter box Hop has been working on all spring? Oh, Joe, he's mighty proud of them flowers. Well, we had to get some kind of a bouquet for Kathleen. Yeah, but if he finds out about it, he, he won't feed us for six months. Well, now, what's more important, you missing a few meals or, or making Kathleen happy? Now, that ain't a fair question, is it? Everything is fair in love and war. Now, here, that's your buggy weight. Yeah. How do I look? You look beautiful. You look absolutely beautiful. Really? Kathleen sees in you, there sure is a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. Come on, let's go, you late. Right. Wait, Joe, Joe. You sure now? I mean. You couldn't look any better. Believe me. Yeah. But how? You just tell me how a man can shoot himself in his own foot. Believe me, it wasn't easy. The doctor said he would be laid up for a week. Oh, that's great. That's just dandy. You sure messed things up, didn't you? I did. Yes, you. You're supposed to scare him out of town. Not cripple him so he can't even run around the block. How was I to know he was so clumsy? Isn't he supposed to be the big gunfighter? And now you tell me Kathleen is sweet on him. You're supposed to be able to predict the future, aren't you? Why, you fake you. Fake, am I? Why, you miserable excuse for a brother. All right, now, sis, calm down, calm down. It's not going to do us any good standing here yelling at each other. Now, what I'm worried about is Craig Bonner going to stay put. Just a minute. 
Just a minute, dear. Don't be so impatient. Craig! You wasn't expecting someone else, was you? Oh, no. Uh, what happened? I had an accident. An accident? Look, it's a long story, and I just assume not go into it right now. I think I'd better sit down. Oh, well, uh... Flowers. You know I get sneezy around them. Yes, dear. Flowers. Craig, don't you think that... I think I'd better sit down. It's a good idea. Here. Ah. Uh. The chocolate. Chocolates. You know I get itchy around them. Oh. Oh, Craig, what am I going to do with you? Is there anybody in the house? No. We're all alone. Why? Craig, you're wearing glasses. You noticed. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Honey, who's that? Oh. What's the matter? Oh, it's 8.30, Craig. So? It's 8.30. So what are you getting so nervous about? You act like you got a keg of powder in your bustle. I think I have. Who is that? Uh, I'll, uh, I'll go see. Get rid of whoever it is. Craig, do you trust me? You're a woman? No. Well, you'll just have to because I can't. Ow! You I stepped on my that. sore foot. Please, get but... Please, Craig, no matter right. what happens, no matter what you hear, that you'll trust me. Please, promise. <sighs> Women. You look beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, is your Paul anywhere about? Oh, well, he's gone into town. He'll be back soon. Come on, sit down. Yes, sir. <laughs> Bless you. That wasn't your Paul? Oh, uh, he had to go into town. He'll be back soon. Well, who's that? Oh, he must have um, been the dog. He's been sick. Hoss, uh, I told Papa he was wrong about you and that I'd invited you out here. Yeah? What, uh, what did he say to that? Oh, he said he was looking forward to meeting you. Yeah, I'll bet he is. Oh, no, he is, Hoss, really. You're sure? Oh, if there's one man I know, it's Papa. And if he didn't want you to come, he'd have said so. Hoss, you were telling the truth, weren't you, when you said you weren't courting anyone but me? Well, yes, ma'am, I was telling the truth. You're the... You're the only one I'm courting. Glasses. Here, glasses, glasses. Here. And you really like me? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Do you really mean that, Oz? Sure, I mean it. And you care? I mean, you really care? Yes, ma'am. I, I like you a bunch. Oh, Oz. <laughs> my errand, too. Kathleen! Papa! Wait, Mr. Walker! Th Mr. Walker, this ain't what it looks like. It ain't, huh? And what are you doing here alone with my daughter? Well, it seems to me you've got her in a mighty compromising position. But, and it also seems to me that there's only one honorable solution, and that's marriage. Boss, we have no choice. I've... I've heard enough. No, Craig. I've come here after ten years of courting you, Kathleen, to take you as my bride. My eyes have gone bad, and I've given up gunfighting forever. I even bought that little ranch, just like you wanted, but when I get here, what do I find? You've given up gunfighting? Why didn't you tell me, Craig? You never gave me a chance, fooling around with this yahoo here. Oh, Craig, you don't understand. I understand what I hear, and I hear you're gonna marry this no-good galoot. Well, I've heard enough. I'm leaving forever. Bless you. Oh. 
Oh, Craig. Craig. What's the matter with you? Ain't you got no blood in your veins? Go get her. You're right. Now, see here. Miss Kathleen, I, I ain't afraid of him. Hey, you. Hoss, I love him. Oh, well, that's different. See, Mr. Walker. Why you ever seeing him anyway? Why is he holy? Holy, holy. I'm beautiful. You ain't one Why still? Don't even ask. Did something go wrong? Not all together. I didn't get to court her none. She's already courting another feller. Craig bought her. She's gonna marry him as soon as her Paul gets out of jail. Reason her Paul went to jail. Forget it. Like you said. Yeah. Don't need a mask. Well, uh, I'll put these in some water for you. Thanks, Joe. Are you the Cartwrights? Yes, well, I'm Ben Cartwright. These are my boys. Sergeant Devlin, would you be good enough to accompany me, sir? Yes. You reckon what they're planning on doing, drafting us? Well, you don't have to worry about that. The object is to win wars, not lose them. <laughs> Seventeen years, Ben. Remember? The Southwestern Territory, the Apaches, Comanches. Remember? How could I ever forget? My goodness, you're a sight for sore eyes. You, you haven't met my sons. This is uh, little Joe, Colonel Joe. How are you? My son, Hoss. My Good pleasure, man. young gentleman. Uh, well, sit down, sit down. Sit down. Mr. Cartwright! Mr. Cartwright! I'm sure glad you're home. You're going to be a big one. 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 Hop Singh is an old friend of mine, Colonel Joe. Oh! Oh, Frank. Oh, of course, oh. of course. Listen, uh, he's got a whole bunch of men outside. Will you uh, get some coffee and uh, make up a mess of sandwiches, will you? For a whole army? Oh, for a whole army, yes. <laughs> Keith, what brings up the Ponderosa? To what do we owe this honor? Ben, I've come because I need your help. My help? Major Cartwright was a fine soldier. A man to be counted on for any mission. However difficult or dangerous. Oh, wait a minute now. That was 17 years ago. <laughs> ben, I need that dependability again. You know the Indians in this land better than any man in this territory. I need you to guide me to the Jarbridge Mountains. I must find El Coro, war chief of the Paiutes. El Coro? Is that the young fanatic that led that attack at Pyramid Lake a couple of years ago? Yeah. He wiped out almost a whole battalion of militia. He's the one. After that battle, the tribes broke up and scattered. He's up there in that mountain with a band of warriors, women and their children. Some 80 heavily armed men who refuse to recognize the authority of the United States. Ben, I want to talk peace. To convince El Coro that we're willing to extend our friendship to him and his people at almost any price. Colonel, a little band of men you got out there wouldn't stand a chance if the Indians decided to attack you. Precisely why I've brought only a small detachment. 
Two troops of cavalry were sent out last year. They were repulsed with heavy casualties. This time, the army feels that we must find El Coro and convince him that ours is a peace mission. Don't you think that a permanent treaty with El Coro is worth the trouble? Yes, of course I do. Then join us, Ben. Yes, of course I will. Irish pendants. Where do you think you are in the Navy? What do you think you're doing? Going with fun. That's what I'm doing. No, you ain't. I'm going with him. Already got my horse saddle and everything. I know you got your horse saddle. I got my horse saddle too, and I'm going with him. No, you ain't. Let me tell you something. No, all right, all right. Now, we'll make it a sporting proposition. All right? Sporting proposition. High card goes, low card stays. Wait a minute. Them cards, the same one we played poker with the other night, ain't they? Yeah, these are the same cards. Yeah. Well, them pasteboards is educated, and you ain't no gentleman. Well, well, just exactly what's that supposed to mean? What, did I cheat? Is that what you're saying? That's right. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't think that's very fair. If you just... Just look at the cards. There's nothing phony about it all. Just look right at them. Take any card you want to take. Okay. Huh. Ace of diamonds. That looks to me like a three of spades underneath there. Nice try. Well, why don't we just stop playing the games and we'll both go. Look, Joe, somebody's got to stay here and look after the ranch, and you know that. I don't doggone it. Well, quit worrying about it. I'll take care of Paul. Well, who's going to take care of you? Now, what's all this about? Little Joe and me are just cutting cards. See who's going to go with you, and I won. I'm going. Oh, I see. I have nothing to say about that. Well, Paul, there ain't no use in both of us staying here. Just take care of the ranch. I mean, one can stay here and... Oh, I see. One of you can stay here and take care of the ranch, and the other can come along and take care of the poor, weak old man. Is that it? Oh, now, come on, Pot, and that's not what horse meant at all. What we meant... The answer is no. What do you mean, no? N-O, no. Right, look, Paul, you can tell me to jump my well, and I'll do it without thinking twice. But I won that, that card cutting, and, and I'm going. Even if I have to go out there and volunteer and go as a blue coat with the colonel. Now, you make up your mind which way it's going to be. Well, you know, horse, you talk that way to El Coro... He'll have his whole tribe surrendering. Then I'm going, right? Well, I always said two cartwrights are tougher than one. Come on. Morning, Ben. Ready to march? Yeah, all right, except uh, one little problem we... Have a little mutiny in our hands. We have an extra volunteer. Horse. It's your decision, son. I hope you realize the risk involved. Yes, sir. Goodbye, young man. Good luck, Colonel. Take care of yourself now. Yeah. Little brother, you don't give it away or ain't while we're gone. You watch yourself, too. Forget you're the biggest target on the field aside from that wagon. <laughs> Prepare them out! Out!
What is it, Ben? We got company. Where? Over your left shoulder. From now on, we're in their territory. Sergeant Evelyn. Yes, sir. I want a man on point. Also establish flank security about 300 yards out along those foothills. Remember, this is a peace mission. The men are fired on, they'll fall back on the main body without returning fire. Is that clear? Clear, sir. Wiggins, you take the point. Shaw, left flank. Huntley, right flank. And keep your eyes peeled if you want to save your scalp. Keith, might be a good idea to substitute a white cloth for that guide on. They're going to have us under surveillance from now on. We might as well let them know why we're here. Private Lowell, convey that to Sergeant Devlin. I want the man on point to carry a white flag as a sign of truce. Yes, sir. I thought it had been due quite the last couple of days. If El Coro decides to attack, we're just going to be setting ducks. Well, let's just hope he doesn't. He can see what a small, peaceful party we are. Keith, you've been fighting Indians long enough to know how unpredictable they are. Look up ahead now. There's no turning back now. you to control your mouth. Sergeant! Mr. Cartwright! This is a military matter and you'll stay out of it. Oh, Keith, that sergeant was brutalizing the boy. I know enough about the military. I know something of the military too, Ben. And I give orders here. Sergeant, one more infraction of the rules and you'll account to a general court-martial. You all right, boy? Keep out of it, Cartwright. All right. Thank you, mister. I'd best stay out of that sergeant's way if I were you. It's Pison. Coffee, Colonel? No, thank you, Poker. That'll be all. Tired, right? No, I'm fine, Poker. Thank you. You can join the others, Poker. I'm sorry about today, Ben. Devlin's a good soldier. I need him. Well, Keith, a good soldier doesn't abuse the men under him. Ben, that boy's carelessness almost cost us the wagon. There are enough food stuff, blankets, and medicines in it to keep El Coro's people alive through the winter. Devlin knows that. I guess he just lost his head. It's been a hard ride. I guess we're all a bit edgy. Let's see now. Barring any hostile action, we should reach the foot of the Jarbridge Mountains in about two days. Yes, yeah, that's the way I figured. This spot might make a good camp. As a matter of fact, it would. I know it. Splendid. We'll plant our white flag and find some way to bring El Cor to negotiate. 
Well, that's my job. Huh? I'll go on ahead and seek him out. Ben, you know how dangerous that can be. I wouldn't like to leave Hoss behind. If El Coro's in any mood to talk, one man's enough. And if he isn't, well, Hoss will just make an extra scalp for him. I don't have to tell you what this means to me, Ben. To the mission. I couldn't ask, yet I knew you'd offer. Look at this, Ben. <laughs> Mexican brandy. And look at the year. <laughs> the same year you and I crossed into Mexico after Comanches. Our baptism of fire, remember? You know, Keith, I've always been suspicious of you. I always figured that underneath that regulation tunic, there beat the heart of an unabashed sentimentalist. <laughs> Duty is a hard mistress, Ben. One day, you wake up wondering where it all went. Wondering what you've got to show for all the years, all the scars. Jew Ben, you've got something to point to. You've got three fine sons. Ponderosa, wealth and respect. And I've got... one final mission. And this bottle of brandy. Last mission. To the last mission. Just a coyote, probably. Yeah, them coyotes may have feathers. Better have a look around. Be careful, Ben. I can't afford to lose you. Keith, I can't afford to lose me either. <laughs> <laughs> Sure enjoy your chow. Yeah, that's mighty good good, bro. Something, Mr. Cartwright? Don't you? Sergeant, I suggest that you get your men away from the fire. They're sitting ducks there. All right, you men, take cover. Out here, ain't it? Yeah, sort of. Hoss, you and your pa known Colonel Chow a long time, ain't you? Yeah, well, pa is, I ain't. How long you been with him, anyhow, Corporal? Going on ten years. Right through Texas, Kansas, Montana, all them blazing spots. Wherever there was engines to fight. He was sure some fine officer in them days. Earned every bar on his shoulders. Till the Creek Summit massacre, that is. That yeah, was where that whole column of soldiers got wiped out, ain't it? Yes, sir. The Coral's braves cut him to pieces. Now your soul and a beast walked away. Colonel Darrell's never seen. His wife and daughter was in that massacre. His wife and daughter? Yes, sir. 
They joined up with a column on their way to be with the colonel. We rode out there the next afternoon and found what was left of them. Thought we'd have to tie the colonel down. Never saw a man act like that in your life. Kept screaming for us to kill, kill. There was nothing to shoot at. An engine inside. Just some wagons. And poor soldier boys. The colonel's dead kinfolk. You telling those stupid yarns again, poker? I wasn't doing nothing, Sergeant. We were just having a little joint session, that's all. Right, Mr. Conrad? Yeah. Crazy old barracks rat. He gets the line worst every year. He was just telling me about the colonel's wife and... Wife and daughter and how they got killed in the massacre? Yeah. No wife, no daughter. Colonel Gerald's never been married. You mean it? all that was... In poker's head. Now, let me give you some free advice, Cartwright. You stay away from my men. Sergeant, what makes you such a pleasant one, anyhow? Now, get this through your head, Cartwright. Maybe to you and your meddling father, I'm some kind of a dog. Well, if that's so, I only serve one master. Colonel Keith Gerald. I do my job and I don't ask any stupid questions. In other words, I'm a soldier. You get in my way again. And you'll find out the hard way. Don't you threaten me. I'm not threatening you, Mr. Cartwright. I'm just telling you for your own good. Then why is it always so cold in the morning just before the light? Didn't seem that bad in the old days, did it? Well, we don't have the hot blood of youth to help us out today. Don't seem to be helping me much, I'll tell you. How about you, Poker? Cool don't bother me much, sir. I just follow orders. Well, we better finish packing up. Paul. How long did you see it been since you seen Colonel Gerald? Oh, about 17 years, I'd say. Why? Talking to old Poker last night, and he told me the Colonel lost his wife and daughter in that Creek Summit massacre. He ever mention that to you? I mean, yeah. Just wondering. We buried him out. Buried him out. Out! Out! Colonel, who's riding point today? Poker? Sir? You ride point. Moving, poker.
sir. That's that's poker's horse. man. <laughs> Stop sniveling. He died like a soldier. Sergeant, form a burial detail. I need a new point, man. I'm volunteering. You're a civilian. You're not obligated. Nevertheless, you're going to need a new man. It's up to you, son. So long, Paul. Yeah. Paul! Well done, young Cartwright. Took courage and fortitude to volunteer to ride point. Uh, wasn't much to it, Colonel. Those Indians tired pretty fast. I don't reckon there's been on killing any of Those red devils are always in a killing mood. Keith? How come you didn't tell me about your wife and daughter being killed by Indians? Let's get some sleep. Ethan, I asked you a question. Tomorrow's another day, Ben. We'll talk then. Good night. Thank you. How's it going? What's the matter? Cartwright, you and your old man, well, most of it in this outfit, we, we think you're all right. You, you trying to tell me something, Wiggins? Did Lowell talk to you? No. Why? Poker was a friend of mine and Lowell's. The night before he got it, he told us about the colonel's plans. He said he wasn't going to go through with it. Said he was going to tell you or your pa. Devil didn't hurt him. That's why he put him out on the point to die. Look, buddy, you ain't, you ain't making a whole lot of sense to me. You got to help us, you and your pa's. 
What are you talking about? Gerald didn't come here to make no peace. Well, he talked headquarters into thinking so, but that ain't what he's got on his mind. He come here to wipe out Elcor and all those Indians, all of them. With ten men? I'm gonna show you something that'll convince you. I'm gonna... Ben, it's time. Yeah. Soon we sign up. Yeah. Good luck. What's your horse doing here? I made up my mind, Paul. I'm going with you. We had this out last night. You're staying here. Oh, Paul, there's something going on around here. This whole setup. If there's something wrong with this whole setup. If. Paul, you know it is. First, it was poker. Then Wiggins, they both tried to tell me something. I'm trying to say something to you if you listen. If there's something wrong, it's better for you to stay here and keep an eye out for both our sakes. I've got to go see El Coro. You're right. Now you take care of yourself. You take care of yourself. Be careful. Something troubling you, young man? Well, Colonel, now that you mention it, yeah, a couple of things. First is El Coro, and then you. There's some questions I'd like to get some answers to. Answers? That's right. <laughs> the answer, young Mr. Cartwright, can be found in that wagon. You have my permission to enter it and look. Colonel, you can't... Relax, Sergeant. We'd have uncovered our little secret presently, anyhow. A few hours more or less scarcely matters. Go ahead, have a look. Interesting weapon, don't you agree, Mr. Cartwright? Never saw anything like it. What is it, anyhow? It's newly invented by a man named Richard Gatling. It'll give this small unit the firepower of a hundred men. You plan on using this? Precisely. With that gun and the element of surprise, peace should come rather quickly, I should say. It's the only way peace can be achieved. You're out of your mind. On the contrary, I'm a realist. These inferior savages who stand in the way of our civilization must be annihilated. It's the only way. Sergeant Devlin? Place Mr. Cartwright under guard. If he tries to escape, shoot him. 
What about my Paul? Your father will be a regrettable sacrifice for the cause of peace. For that, I'm truly sorry. Not half as sorry as you're gonna be. Red House, Red Fight! I think I got him, sir. He won't go far. But what if he does? Well, we can't go after him. We can't leave the Gatlin gun. I don't like it. Well, neither do I, but we don't have much choice, do we? came to see you, El Coro. You have found me, Ben Cartwright. I wish to speak of peace, with honor. Then you are a welcome sight to my eyes. Come with me. tell you, Ben Cartwright, that in these mountains our people are starving, our horses are dying. We have no food, no ammunition, and each day I bury men who are like my right arm, good fighting men who die of the lung sickness. In the beginning I had 50 warriors. Now I have 15. Even the will to fight is dying within us. Then make peace. The white man's peace. My warriors have fought well, Ben Cartwright. They are men, not animals. They could not endure prison or slavery. Well, Coro, they, they won't be slaves. I give you my word. And Colonel Jarrell, the soldier who is with me, he's empowered to make a peace treaty with you. And that treaty will be honored. You have my word on that. What will happen to my people? Nothing will happen to them. They'll go to the reservation at Pyramid Lake. But they'll be free to hunt, to farm, to live. This was once all our land. We were free to hunt everywhere, as far as we could ride. Now that time is gone. It is gone. I cannot bring it back. All right. I will meet with the soldier. We will make a treaty. Good. You're a true chief to your people. What is it? 
A white man. My warriors found him in a desert not far from here. He's been shot by your soldiers. My son. Oh. Gerald. It's a trap. He's fainted. They have both been betrayed. So I will deal with the soldier. Hold on, hold on. Wait, I'll call him. You, you can't face those soldiers alone. Stay here with your son. When I return, we will talk. El Caro, let me deal with him. I will let you bury him. there. I can feel them. We won't see them till they're right on top of us. All the better. Side, huh, Colonel? It's only the beginning, Sergeant. They'll be back. See to the men, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Only one survivor, sir. Lowell. He'll live to hang. Sergeant. Sergeant Devlin. Many of my men were killed. Thirsty work for you, huh, boy? Well, don't worry. It'll soon be over. When I get through, there won't be a single Indian left. Nothing can stand against me. I'll destroy everything that does. It's Mr. Cartwright, sir. I've got eyes. Gerald, I'm coming in. Don't do it, Ben. Don't try it. Drop to the ground, Cartwright. There's been enough killing here today. I gave you an order, Ben. Do I have to kill you? Came here to make peace. There'll be no peace till they're all dead. 
You don't know what you're saying, Gerald. They've got to die, every one of them. You're gonna have to kill me too. I'm going to fire, Ben. This is an automatic weapon. It'll kill every one of you. Nothing can stand against it. No, no, Colonel. I've got to kill. Pete. Kill. Kill me. Kill him. You don't understand, Ben. I've got to kill them. They massacred my wife and my daughter. I've got to kill them. Kill them. Kill them. Kill them. <laughs> Peace, Ben Cartwright. Yes. Yes, we want peace. Indoors. Oh, I almost forgot now how silent the nights can be here. I'd almost forgotten so many things that happened here. Well, six years is a long time to be away. Well, I had to have an Eastern education or father wouldn't have been happy. I say, dear boy, haven't you noticed how terribly cultured I've become? Well, no, actually, I've been too busy noticing how you've grown up. And how you have grown up. You are still sweet, little Joe. Just as sweet as I remembered you. Oh, look! Look, there's the North Star. I studied astronomy in school, I'll have you know. Well, I think that's fabulous. You can help us navigate in case we get lost. <sighs> Jed, that Laura of yours is sure a lovely gal. Daughter any father be proud of. Well, I don't mind telling you, Ben, I was scared to death when she got off that stagecoach yesterday. <laughs> you know, it suddenly hit me that maybe after all those years in Boston, she might not like it out here anymore. You know, her grandmother never stopped thinking of me as some sort of savage Westerner. Well, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, Laurie's back. It's as if she'd never left. You know, Ben, during those last years when Mildred was so sick, she worried about how Laurie would get along after she was gone. You did the right thing, sending her off to school like that. And I also remember how high a value Mildred placed in education. Yes, I, I guess she would be proud of her. Everybody seems to take to Laurie, don't they, Ben? Yeah. Including my little brother, Joe, if I can read the signs. Listen, Hoss, your little brother's not so little anymore. Matter of fact, I wouldn't mind having him in my family. Well, who knows? <laughs> How many are you up on anyhow, Cleve? 1,642. Well, yeah. right now I slipped up. Get over this beautiful sky and the fragrance of those pines. Yeah. A girl could lose her mind on a night like this. Especially with a handsome young escort like you. Well, thank you very much, ma'am. Now that I'm back, little Joy, I hope that we're going to be seeing a lot of each other. Oh, I hope so, too. I guess we should be getting back to the house. I, uh, I think you're right. Are you 
you're really sure that that you want to go back to the house now? a chance to explain. Explain what? Isn't it clear what he was trying to do to her? Down all morning, Pa. Six years we've been waiting for her to come home. But now this. You feeling all right, Laurie? I'll be all right. Honey, about last night. Please. I've known that boy all his life. I just can't bring myself to believe that he would do such a thing. I told you what happened. Don't you believe me? Oh, of course I do, darling. I was just going to say that... Daddy! All right. All right, Laurie. We won't talk about it. Um, why don't you have something to eat? No, I don't feel like eating. I... I'm going for a ride. I'd like to get about five minutes alone with that Joe Cartwright. Now, look, you just leave the Cartwrights to me. What's going on here, Cleve? What are you doing? Well, does it look like we're done? There hadn't been a fence between these properties in 20 years. Yeah, well, there is now. And it's going to get bigger. You got anything to say, rough boy? Well, look, just how are we going to get out to the herds on the northwest section? I don't know. How are you going to get out to the herds on the northwest section? It costs us a half a day just going around the... Nobody the... asked you, saddle tramp. Hold it. hold it, hold it, Stark. All right, let's get back to work. Any time you got the stomach for a little real trouble, you just come around. We'll be here. Come on, Joe. Hello, Jed. I'm just coming over to see you, Ben. Well, good. Jed, you know, this talk about fences and all that, why we've been friends for such a long time. That friendship you... is over, Ben. I just wanted you to know that I'm of no mind to see any violence. Well, of course, nobody wants to see any violence, but... Whether there is violence is entirely up to you. Up to me? You and your family. You respect that fence, there won't be any trouble. Otherwise... <laughs> look, Chad, I don't know what you and I are doing talking about fences. Why, look, about last night... The fence stays, Ben. Don't cross it.
Howdy, Mr. Cartwright. Joe. How you doing, Bob? What brings you to town? Well, you know that little, uh, little triangle of land between the Ponderosa and the Ferguson property? <laughs> Strange that you should ask about that. Strange? Why? Jed Ferguson was in this morning and bought it. Well, first he builds the fences and now this. He hasn't got any dang use for that piece of land, but he knows it's going to cost us half a day every time we have to ride out to the northwest section. Jed Ferguson bought it. Well, no point in feeling about it. All right, son. I'll buy a drink before we go home. It's been a dusty day. Thanks, Will. Good day. Good day, Mr. Cartwright. Uh, howdy, Mr. Cartwright. How do you, Joe? How do you do? Haven't seen you folks for quite a spell. How's everything? Oh, just fine, thank you. A uh, couple of beers? Yeah, sounds good. Please. Look who's here. Hello, Cleve. What's the matter, rough boy? Not talking? Just talk to girls, huh? That's about all you can handle, I guess. I can take that. That'll be a plea. Oh, is this supposed to be for rough boy here? You mean little Joe, that's who I drew it for. I beg your pardon. <laughs> How impolite of me. Here. I'm sorry, rough boy. Wasn't that clumsy of me? Oh, oh I'm going to enjoy this. Now, just a minute, fellas. Mr. Carter, can't you do something? <laughs> care of the drinks and the damage. Joseph, let's go. Clay! Didn't I tell you to stay away from the Cartwrights? To leave things to me? But no, you had to go and pick a fight. I couldn't help it, Pa. When I saw them come in, and that cocky little... little Joe acting as if nothing had ever happened. Oh. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Larry. I better get started breaking in that new batch of horses, Pa. All right, I'll be out in a minute. Oh, Cleve, it's such a beautiful day. Why don't you come riding with me? I wish I could, sis, but I've got work to do. I heard about the fight. It was all on account of me, wasn't it? No, it had nothing to do with you. Just something personal between me and little Joe. Those Cartwrights, they think they run everything. But they're going to find out fast that they don't. Well, I'll just bet that little Joe looks a lot worse than you do. Yeah. I hope I didn't say anything wrong, Father. Cleve seemed upset. Oh, he's just a bit touchy now. He'll get over it. How's my little girl today? <laughs> Your little girl is just fine, Father. Oh, it's good to see you laugh again. I'm glad you're not, uh, you know... Well, I'm not going to allow a silly little incident to upset all our lives. Well, I don't want my little girl to think about it. Not ever. We'll settle that account in our own way, Cleve and I. All right, Daddy. Laurie, I'm sure you know as well as I do that the um, men around here are a different breed from the men you must have met back east. <laughs> yes, I found that out in a hurry. You're a very pretty girl. Lots of men are going to be after you, and uh, 
Well, all I'm trying to say is be careful, dear. Don't, um, well, you know, don't encourage them. What kind of a girl do you take me for? Well, you know what I mean, honey. Yes. Yes, I know what you mean. And you don't have to worry, Daddy. You know, your mother, God rest her, was a gentle, sensitive woman. And I know she would have wanted me to. No. Don't you talk about my mother. Laurie, I'm just trying to tell you that... No. No, I don't want to hear you talk about my mother. Laurie, where are you going? I'm going for a ride. No, honey. Honey, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have talked the way I did about it. I don't want to hear any more about it. Yes, ma'am, I know. I've seen you. Well, I'm sorry I didn't see you. Yes, ma'am. What's your name? Brett, ma'am. Brett? What a nice name. By the way, my name is not ma'am. I told you it's Laurie. Yes, ma'am. I mean Laurie. That's better, Brett. Well, I guess you want your horse. Thank you. Sure is a fine-looking horse, ma'am. Do you like fine-looking things, Brett? Sure. So do I. They make me feel good. They excite me. What do you do with them, Brett? I don't know what you mean, ma'am. Laurie. I mean Laurie. I mean, is that all you do? Just look at fine-looking things? No, I, I don't just look. Well, what do you do, Brett? Or don't you do anything? Or are you just afraid? Did you like that, Brett? Did you enjoy kissing me? Yes, ma'am. I sure <laughs> Better get off this ranch as fast as you can, Brett. Because if my father or my brother see you after this, they're gonna kill you. Oh, well, uh, Mr. Carteret. Look, uh, Brandon in this hot weather is going to be bad enough. Why do we have to take the long way around to that northwest section? Well, I thought I made that perfectly clear, Stock. We're keeping out the Ferguson property. Well, look, that means we're going to waste a whole half day just getting out there. Well, then I guess you'd better get moving, huh? All loaded, Stark. I sure don't count on that long drive out. <laughs> All on account of one skirt these uh, fancy cart rides don't know how to handle. Well, what the boss don't know won't hurt him, will it? Got an idea? Mm-hmm. Climb on. I know a strip the Fergusons ain't fenced yet. Turn 
off those trees up there. Are you sure you know what you're doing, Stark? Oh, yeah, we won't have any trouble. Ferguson's got no reason to be out this way. I'd sure like to run into that skirt out here, though. I know how to handle her. <laughs> Stop this before somebody gets killed. You got any ideas? Yeah, you just keep them occupied. Throw your guns out in front of you. I said throw them out in front of you. Goes for your pistol too, Cleve. and I stood up, I'd have shot you down right where you stand. Now, both of you, get out of here. Won't end here, Joe. That's up to you, Cleve. Come on. Let's get moving. Hey, Stark! Yeah? Where do you think you're going with that wagon? Start to Brandon. You're on Ferguson property. Well, just taking a little shortcut. This part ain't fenced off anyway. You turn that wagon around. I catch you on Ferguson land again. You pick up your time and keep moving. I uh, guess he means it. Turn around. I thought you said you were all right. Oh, it's just a case. It's all right. Come on, let's get home. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's... Well, I guess we better just stay off of that property. That's about the only thing we can do. Well, there's something I can do. I can get Laura to tell the truth. Joe, you try talking to that girl, and somebody's going to get killed, namely you. He's right, Joe. Best thing to do in a situation like this is wait it out till everybody cools down. Look, Paul. Lori goes riding every morning. If I could just go out there and talk to her, I could get the whole thing cleared up. Joe, I'm telling you, if you get caught on that property, they'll shoot you down. I'll speak to Jed again. Oh, come on, Pi. You spoke to him once. What good did it do? Look, staying clear of the property's not going to help anything because it's not going to clear me. Can't you see that?
Laurie, I want to talk to you. So that's what you were waiting here for? Yeah, that's right. I think it's about time we got this whole thing settled. There's nothing to settle. Aren't you going to help me down off this horse? Well, in order to do that, I'd have to cross this fence your family built. You're not going to worry about a silly little fence, are you? Look, Laurie, my brother Hoss was almost killed yesterday because of this fence, and so was your own brother Cleve. And you know the reason why. I don't know what you're talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, you're going to have to tell your father the truth. The truth? The truth about what happened between you and me at the Ponderosa. Look, your father's a reasonable man. If you just, just explain to him it was an accident, that your dress was torn by mistake, I'm sure that... You mean you want me to lie? Lie? Well, that's not how it happened, little Joe. Why are you doing this to me? Look, Lori, I don't... Don't touch me! Don't you touch me! To it. And she started hitting me with this thing. When I took it away from her, she rode off. Boy, if she'd just quit lying, this whole thing would be solved in a jiffy. I don't know if she's lying. Oh, Pa, you don't think that I no, really had... No, 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 of course not. Laurie may think she's telling the truth. What's that supposed to mean? I've known her ever since she was a little girl. Since she was born. Laurie was always a... Sensitive little girl. Very much like Mildred, her mother. Yeah. I guess when her mother fell off that horse and became paralyzed, that didn't help her much, did it? Well, it was a hard time for everybody, but particularly for Laurie. She became even more withdrawn. And then her grandmother came out from the east to take care of everybody. It wasn't a very happy time for Jed, I can tell you. Well, she blamed Jed for everything, for the accident, for the lingering illness, the paralysis, even blamed him for Mildred's death. And then she forced Jed to let her take Laurie back east with her. I still, I still don't see how this fits in with the way Laurie's acting now. Well, I know it may seem far-fetched, but there's a connection somehow. <laughs> The person is caught between two opposing forces. On the one hand, there's Laurie's father. Now, Laurie loves her father, we know that. On the other hand, there's Laurie's grandmother. And she hates Jed, we know that. And there's no telling what, what her grandmother could have, could have said to Laurie to change her, because that girl has changed. Something is eating away at her. Jed Ferguson. Jed? I want to talk to you, Ben. All right, come inside. Outside will do. I'll get right to the point. It's only out of regard for our former friendship that little Joe's still alive. But believe me, Ben, he's pushed his luck beyond the limit. Jed, the only reason little Joe... Now, I don't want to argue with you about it. I'm just telling you. Keep him away from my daughter. That's all I got to say.
I saw your light. Just thought I'd come in and say good night. Is everything all right, Daddy? Yes. Yes, I, I, I just had some business to take care of. Laurie. Yes? The picture of your mother by my bed. It's missing. Missing? Yes. Do you know anything about it? No. Well, we'll look for it in the morning. Good night, dear. Good night, Daddy. Good night. as cool as that grass you're sitting in. And you're breathing real nice and easy, like a frisky young coat. You're that Laurie Ferguson, ain't you? Who are you? Well, I ain't gonna tell you. Not just yet, anyway. Now, you've been uh, fooling around with that Joe Cartwright, and uh, you know what a waste of time that is, don't you? What you need, Laurie, is a man. Real man. Like me. I may not be so rich and so fancy, but one thing I know how to handle is a woman. What makes you think I'd be interested in someone like you? Don't bother me too much what you think you're interested in. As I know. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like me a woman that fights. And now, honey, I'm gonna show you how a man teams himself a little wildcat. Well, now I know you and me are gonna be good friends. Because we're gonna have... Let's go take a look. What happened to you? Oh, she, that Joe, she, she's crazy. She, she grabbed my gun. And she's meaner than a she-wolf, Joe. Crazy. 
Come on, let's get him. Let's get him to the dock. I'm going to go over and try to talk some sense into Mr. Ferguson. Now, don't go messing around, Joe. This here's work for the sheriff. You just get him to the dock as quick as you can. Honey, you needn't be afraid of me. I'm your father. I'm just gonna go get the doctor. I'll be right back. Honey, I'm not up to anything. I'm just going in to get the doctor. You're not going to leave me sick in bed to die while you go into town to see another woman. I'll see you dead first. What are you talking about? I'm your father. I know who you are. And you're not going to leave me sick in bed to die like you left my mother while you go off with another woman. Laurie, in heaven's name, who are you talking about? What woman? You know what woman? you brought in this house every day while my mother was dying. <laughs> Lori, she was a neighbor, a friend of Mildred's. That's all she was, nothing but a friend. No, no, she's not my friend, not my friend. And I'm not going to stay in bed and die. Lori, please, let me get the doctor. You're not well. You're imagining all sorts of strange Don't things. Don't you move. Take one more step, and I'm going to shoot you. Lori, please listen to me. 
No. No, I listen to you. I listen to you every night. You and she alone downstairs laughing, laughing your disgusting laughter. While my mother was upstairs in bed dying, dying! Because you brought her out here to die, to die among savages, savages, savages like you. No, Laurie, I loved her. I loved your mother. You loved her? And that other woman? That, that friend? That's all she was, a friend. She was a good friend of your mother's as well as mine. No, you're lying! You're lying! She was your lover! She was your lover! Is that what she told you, Lori? What are you doing here? What do you want? Is that what she made you believe, your grandmother? Go away! Go away! Don't come any nearer! Be careful, little child. She teach you all this hatred. To hate your father, to hate all men. To make you feel the bitterness she could never make your mother feel. I don't want to hear anymore. I don't want to listen to you. Laurie, give me the gun. Don't move. Don't touch me. You come any closer and I'll shoot you. Laurie, what are you afraid of? He killed her. He killed my mother with his lies. She lay upstairs in that bed, dying, thinking of him downstairs with another woman. And it killed her. Laurie, there was never anyone but your mother, and she knew it. We loved each other. It's true that that woman, and she was a good woman, would come in sometimes to help. She tried to cheer me, to, to make me laugh, to put up a pot of coffee or cook some supper, because Mildred wanted it that way. But I never loved anyone but your mother. No! You're lying! You're lying! Did your grandmother ever tell you how your father worked and sacrificed himself to build up this ranch? Just for you and Cleve. Did she ever tell you why your father never remarried again after your mother died? Because there wasn't another woman in this whole world that he could love. Did she ever tell you what everybody in Virginia City knows? That your father just lived for the day you could come back here and be with him. to me to put back in my wall again. What's the doctor say, Pa? Well, it'll be a long pull, but eventually he feels that you'll be all right. I wish you happy to hear that. Ben, I just can't find the words to. Jed, there's no need to, you know that. I'm mighty proud of your boy. So am I. Joe, those fences are coming down in the morning. We out there to help you take him down. 
Well, fences never did make for good neighbors. Never found a fence yet that was a substitute for understanding. Now, Jed, didn't you have some good ruby port wine around here somewhere? Ben, I know exactly where it is. Come on. Thank you. Thank you.